Welcome back, everybody. So we're moving deeper into our study of Romanticism in American literature, and we start to encounter works that are ambiguous and gothic. Now, most people are familiar with the term ambiguous, you know, pointing that we'll have some works that are uncertain in nature, won't be clear-cut, as before when we were with the uh, Puritans and the Federals. We'll have questions being raised without being answered. In addition, we'll have works that are Gothic. And generally, when we hear the word Gothic, this is what we think about, right? It's that, that period of time after the fall of the Roman Empire that's associated with the Dark Ages, what we also call the Middle Ages. Now, the, the term Gothic has its roots in here, but this is, this is not the definition that we want to be working with. If we think about the roots for that term being associated with that period, it gives us, say for example, um, the ancient, not the ancient, the Gothic cathedrals that would have gargoyles, right? And the gargoyles were meant to ward off evil spirits, right? It's kind of strange having, you know, a gargoyle, these things being on churches, but they were put there back in the day, in the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, to, to scare away evil spirits, but they're pretty frightful looking strange creatures in their own right. So this is where we get the term gothic. Now, when this shifts into the arts, we can see it in painting. It became popular not just in America, but on, on the continent as well. Oh, look. This is a famous painting. This is called The Nightmare. You, you might have studied this if you took art appreciation. It depicts a beautiful maiden who's fallen asleep in a deep slumber and cannot awake. She's kind of sprawled out on her bed. And there's a a devil looks like a little imp sitting on her chest. And then over here, somehow, I guess she left her the door to her bedroom open and a horse got in there. And it's, it's really kind of a strange, disturbing painting. And it's meant to cause a, a sense of unsettlement within the viewer. And this is also true with the different works of literature. And we can see this specifically with Hawthorne, as well as the master of Gothic literature in America, who is Edgar Poe. Yes, my favorite action figure, Edgar Poe. Wave to everybody. And you can guess what he has on his shoulder. Do you want to guess what bird that is? Yeah, it's the raven. And to a lesser extent, Washington Irving as well. We could classify him in terms of Gothic. So what's happening, right, is we have manifest destiny, which is all this progress and all this optimism, but there's some dark undercurrents of humanity that are starting to upset people, whether they're aware of it or not. The issues of slavery, the trail of tears forcing the Native Americans to move from their, you know, the settlements that they've had for centuries and the East and out West. So in this literature, it's going to plunge the characters into mysteries and torment, fearful situations that's going to cause the, the, you know, us as the, the readers to pose questions regarding our comfortable ideas for humanity and society, our place in the world, and oftentimes contradictions ambiguous nature regarding the, the mind and the psyche. Um, writers during this time like to use a lot of allegory as well, and they like to wrap it in here too. So there's different ways to, to read these works that embrace the, the Gothic and as well as ambiguity, because that's kind of how that they were written. There's no such just moving away th things being clear cut. So, moving into the Gothic in American literature.
So until the next lecture, be well, do good work, and keep in touch.